Hello, everyone, and welcome to Native Plants at Noon. My name is Amy Humphrey Hayes, and I'm coming to you all the way from the Netherlands today. Uh, it's been a beautiful day here today, and uh, it's actually really in keeping with today's theme, which is uh, the winter garden and some of the wonderful things that you could be doing uh, for enhancing wildlife and enjoying your garden here in some of these slightly warmer days during the winter. So uh, let me just share this slide with you here. First of all, we wanted to thank our sponsors. Uh, of course, the Missouri Department of Conservation is a wonderful sponsor of ours, and we certainly couldn't do any of this without your support. So we certainly appreciate everything that you all have done for us as well. Coming up on March the 2nd is a DIY Native Landscape Design Workshop. This is going to be a really great workshop where Sydney is going to be showing you different ways for designing your native plant garden. There are actually two components to this. There is a virtual session uh, beforehand, and then there is also an in-person presentation. And after that, you'll have the opportunity to speak with some of the local native plant experts in the area. So it should be a really wonderful presentation. It is free and open to the public, but we do ask that you register in advance because uh, the seating or the uh, openings are limited. This webinar will be recorded, so you will be receiving an email coming up probably next week with a link to the email, uh, I'm sorry, to the uh, video in case you would like to review anything. And there will be some resources in there as well. So if there's anything you missed or you wanted to go back and, and look at something again, you'll be getting all of this next week. And as I mentioned in the chat here, please drop any comments that you might have in the chat. And if you have any questions, go ahead and put those into the Q&A section. I won't be answering those personally today. As you probably know, the uh, big Planet Native conference is going on right now. So everyone at Deep Roots is deeply involved in that. And so they asked me to come and host the Native Plants at noon today. Of course, it's Native Plants at 7 p.m. where I am, but I'm delighted to be here. And I will certainly make sure that all of your questions and comments get to uh, Sydney next week. And if you'd like, you're more than welcome to go ahead and just email her directly, and she will be happy to email you back. And I'll drop a link to that and also to the upcoming workshop in the chat here in just a moment. And finally, you can always visit deeproots.org if you want to find out any more information about resources, upcoming events, um, if you want to make a donation, which would be a wonderful support for the organization. So please go visit deeproots.org and see what kinds of things we have on offer there. Okay, without any further ado, I will go ahead and start the video for you. If you have any questions, like I said, please go ahead and put those in there. If you have any technical difficulties, I hope you'll let me know and uh, we'll get those sorted out. So here we are. Hey everyone, Hi. welcome to Native Plants at Noon, the February edition. Yes. It doesn't quite feel like February in Kansas City, but we have a great show for you today on some tasks you can do in the landscape on these slightly warmer winter days. But before we begin, I'm Sydney Ross, Outdoor Education Manager with Deep Roots, and today I have special guest Madison Twight with me from Missouri De Department of Conservation. Yeah. So Madison, tell us a little bit about your interest in native plants and kind of how you got into it. So my grandma had a native plant garden when I was little and she always told me about how important the milkweed is for the butterflies and I kind of forgot about it, but then when I started working here, I met Sydney and realized that working with native plants is something you can do as a full-time job as a career and I just fell in love and I want to keep learning more and more. <laughs> I love that. I, I think that is um, a really um, something that hits home for a lot of people, right? Yeah. We've either grown up with gardens that our families have tended to. Um, just being exposed to nature brings so much joy and mm -hmm. the fact that you can have um, this as a profession is yeah. really awesome. Um, at least I think so. I have a lot of Definitely. fun doing it. So, well, wonderful. Well, we have a great show for you today. We are going to take a look at the gardens here at the Discovery Center and talk about a few maintenance tips that you could do um, if you are trying to maintain wildlife habitat and have a more uh, like neater, uh, cleaner public aesthetic. Um, and we'll just jump right in. 
Okay, so we are here at the Butterfly Garden at the Discovery Center out in kind of the prairie area. And uh, we have this section right here of standing plant material. Uh, it was looking really good up until we had like five inches of heavy snow. So I'm gonna just do a little sculpting, if you will, and edit out some of the taller plants and some of the walkers. So this is one of my favorite go-to tools. It is a electric hedge trimmer. Uh, Ego is the brand and 56 volt lithium ion. So it is, has a rechargeable battery. We like to have a couple, just if you get into a lot of work, you don't have to worry about uh, waiting to recharge. Um, and what I like about this is um, it has, the, the blade is sharp enough to cut uh, plants, but not sharp enough to cut you. Uh, so, Cause it has those little bumpers on the edge. So it's a pretty safe option too, if you are getting started with um, gardening tools. So it's one of my favorites. But of course, got long hair, put your hair up, get your gloves on, safety first. So in this garden here, um, there's a couple plants I want to edit out, and that would be these floppers here. This is a white crown beard. This is a, a common plant that shows up here in the Midwest. Um, it's a great plant for generalist pollinators but it's not really something we want here anymore. Um, they also create frost flowers, which is super cool. Also Pat Whalen's favorite flower. Um, and so uh, a frost flower is when we get our first hard freeze and the water um, shoots up through the stem. And as you know, when water freezes, it expands and it bursts out into ribbons. It's very cool, but that time has passed. So <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of that. There's also, um, some willow leaf sunflower here. Uh, you can't tell, you can tell only a little bit on these because uh, they have those cute little curly leaves. Look how wispy that is. Oh, they're so cool. They're really cool. Um, this is one of those plants in previous episodes. We've talked about the Chelsea Chop. Have, have I told you about the Chelsea Chop? I've heard a little bit about it. Okay. I don't know exactly. I don't know if I could define it. Okay, <laughs> well, I'll define it. Um, it's a term Alex came up with actually in reference to how they grow plants at the, the Chelsea show. Hmm. Um, and, you know, so they bloom at the right time. But for us, we're mimicking herbivory. So when we cut back plants while they're growing, they end up producing more stems and more flowers. So you can see the evidence of that. This one had been cut. Um, you can, I don't know if you can see that main stem here and then all oh these gosh. little stems. Yeah. So I think that's cool. So this really is a fun plant. It's a Silphium uh, willow leaf sunflower, really interesting foliage, but can get really tall. So benefits from an early June cut. And again, um, at this point, you see a lot of things have flopped or fallen over. We've got cut plant back there, which we'll, we'll go into a little more detail on later, but you can see uh, this garden just needs a little love. Um, and you may be wondering, well, Sydney, it's February. You're cutting plants. Really? <laughs> well, we have nine acres here at the Discovery Center and we're leaving most of our plant material standing. However, this is one that I think could use a little love. And, um, you know, it's always good to get a little bit of a head start if you have a lot of land to cover, especially nine acres. So this is why we're doing it. But the plants I will cut, I am gonna leave the stems to be about 12 inches tall so that if there are any nesting, insects they're still able to be in there um and yeah so it's really just to make it more approachable because as you all know native plants get terrible rep for being messy so that's why knowing your maintenance is really important and finding a balance but again all depends on your gardening goals and we're trying to do both have a nice public aesthetic and support wildlife so here we go okay so i'm going to try to keep there's some moments I actually really like. This Monarda here. Do you remember this one? Monarda fistulosa. Yeah, very good. So this is our common bee balm. This is the taller variety that prefers lots of sun. Um, great plant. You can even see goldfinches eating the seeds on these in the winter time. So I'm gonna try to leave this up and just kind of clean up around it. So it looks just a little more intentional, you know?
So I like to do my first sweep, kind of go through. I am keeping it flat just so I can kind of have an even layer. And then I step back and I take another pass. up like that just to loosen it and it looks like we have a tree oh we've got a tree growing in here what tree is that do That's you a know great question huh i'm thinking it could be skinny it is skinny no it's been cut a lot oh okay. you know i don't know could be a could be a mulberry but it looks really soft Let's actually get an up close view and I'll ID it and drop it in in the future. <laughs> Interesting. So it has alternate buds. It has fuzzy. It's kind of fuzzy. Could be sumac. Hmm. Um, you can tell where it had been cut before. <laughs> oh. So you can see that right there. Yeah. That's funny. So I don't know. We don't want to have a tree in here though. So instead of me just cutting it back now, um, which will just encourage it to grow more. I will leave it and then I'll come back in the spring and probably cut and treat it um, Just so that you know or dig it out. We could also dig it out or uh, kind of root dock it. We might do that later Cool. Okay, so now You can see I kind of got this started on this edge um, I like to work the front or kind of like the most prominent uh, viewpoint of the space first and then work my way around gardens are three-dimensional so be sure you step back take a look at the big picture don't get too caught up in the details this rock here um, I'm gonna cut these crown beards just a little bit shorter so that this really stands out a lot of times beautiful rocks in our landscape get swallowed up during the growing season so being able to highlight this in winter is kind of nice I love to use Falco's Swiss made size two uh, to grab some of these, these ones that are kind of closer in the area that I don't want to accidentally cut. So this is when you would switch to your manual tool. Okay. And again, it's kind of like sculpting or making art. You know, you do one cut, you make one decision, you step back, you make another one. And suddenly all those little decisions make something beautiful. Okay. So that looks pretty good for now. And what we'll do is um, we're gonna rake out some of this so we can see what we're working with. 
see which plants are still attached, and then we'll go from there. So are we raking all of this plant debris into the garden or outside of the garden? That's a great question. And depending on your goals, you could do either. Um, we're gonna, what we're gonna do is just rake out some of the larger pieces, like the big plant stalks, and then we'll put that in our compost dumpster, which will sit for another month or so until it's full, um, and then it'll get composted. So, but for you all, if you know, if it's not a problem to leave plant material, you can, but just remember, uh, full sun species tend to not like a lot of plant built, plant material buildup, like uh, duff or leaf litter, things like that because it can rot their roots and um, they're just not adapted to have all that heavy cover. So we're going to just kind of do a combination because it is, um, it does get sun, but it also gets quite a bit of shade in this garden. So we'll do a little bit of both. Great question. Okay. Yeah, let's focus on I bet we'll end up doing is um, a lot of those tall plants will take to Sycamore Station. It makes for really great building material for the kids. So build a fort. Nothing gets wasted here. Darn Bermuda grass. We have a little bit of a Bermuda grass infestation in this bed. They're a pain. Is nice. Bermuda grass native? It's not native. Okay. Um, and you know you got Bermuda grass because um, it, it spreads by rhizomes. We have, The turf grass across from us here at the Discovery Center has a lot of it because it was sold to be used in your lawn, right? Well, it's a pain to get rid of, so. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to rip, rip some of it out by hand just so it doesn't continue to get a foothold. That's a good winter project. Tax some Bermuda grass. Falcos, and we're going to go ahead and get the rest of this area cut back just behind just behind that rock where all the cut plant is laying down and we'll pull it out just so we can see what's underneath right now too because uh, there's already signs of spring uh, with these warmer temps a lot of the foliage is starting to creep back out and emerge some of the foliage was was semi evergreen to begin with they some some plants do stay that way over winter so um, Let's just see what we got here. So you all may have noticed with the cup plant, this, uh, this square stem here, um, Madison and I are easily able to just pull uh, to break it off from the base. And that's not going to hurt the plant because it's not a woody species, it's an herbaceous perennial. And so herbaceous meaning it doesn't have 
a woody stem. It has softer leaves and that kind of structure. Um, so the whole plant on the surface dies back in winter and then uh, comes back with new growth in the following year. So that's why this plant is really easy just to break it off at the base. Sometimes you find friends you forgot were in the garden, like this compass plant. Madison pointed out, so cute. The leaves look amazing in wintertime. And their little fuzzy stems. Too. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I mean, there's really no other plant here in the Midwest that has such interesting leaves like this. And they have rough texture, and that rough texture helps the plant hold moisture. A really, uh, <laughs> we have a nice specimen in the front of the Discovery Center that's still standing, especially if you join us for Planet Native or come the week after that this episode airs. Come to the Discovery Center and check out the front beds there. They're really cute. And while Madison's cutting back some of these by hand, I'm going to go in and cut the rest free um, that's laying down so we can go ahead and pull it out. It's always a good idea to rake out as you go just so you can see what plants are still stuck at the base. we're not raking out everything in the garden bed like we're leaving a lot of plant material we just want to get the big obvious pieces that stand out and look weird in the landscape All right, so Madison and I um, cut back and raked out the, mo the rest of the bigger pieces here in the garden. Notice we left the Monarda fistulosa by that rock and butterfly art. Um, I started pulling out some of the Bermuda grass in here. This is something we'll continue to work on. Um, but while we were in here, we noticed some friends, which is always exciting. I love friends. So Madison pointed this one out. This is poppy mallow. Yes, Calero involucrata, this Ooh, little friend, I know, isn't it? <laughs> so 
so we have a few throughout here and this is such a great plant to incorporate into um, a garden bed either a new one or an established one it grows well with others um, it has kind of like a big uh, tuber as its root so it doesn't take up a lot of root space it's more on the surface um, but the plant has beautiful wine cups um, magenta flowers that kind of climb up through grass and other plants. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's really awesome. It, it's tolerant to, oh yeah, here's more oh, big ones. Yeah. Really tolerant to heat and drought um, and easy to maintain in the uh, later in the year, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a later episode, but such a fun plant and I love the foliage. I like that it just has this kind of cheery uh, palm shape and, and lots of, uh, prolific flowers and blooms throughout the year. There's also a uh, um, bushy eye uh, poppy mallow. Oh. Bush, bushes poppy mallow. Calero bushy eye. I don't know how to say <laughs> it, but that's another one. It's more of like a mounding plant versus this one, which is like low and kind of vines out, but both are awesome. So, uh, so yeah, we noticed that in here. I also want to point out um, so there's some right here on the edge. We have some aster some aromatic aster that was growing here. And I just want to have an up close um, demonstration of how I would cut this back. So the only reason I'm gonna, going to do that is because it is overhanging into the grass and so it's going to get cut ultimately. And I'd rather cut this back and put whatever seed heads are left back into the garden. So to do this, I like to grab as much of the plant as I can and get a sense of where the stems meet the ground. And I take my pruners and I just kind of go in and cut like that. So it's kind of like starting first with, um, if you're giving yourself a bad haircut. <laughs> and then I like to spread it out and kind of go in and make any adjustments if I need to. like. That could be cut in a little more. This looks good. Okay. So now the stem is still there. Um, and then we have these seed heads here, which I'm just gonna rough up and knock right back into the garden. Um, people often ask, how can I have more of these plants or fewer of a certain type of species? And a lot of that has to do with whether or not you let the seeds spread. So um, like asters and goldenrods, um, I love them and they're so prolific and can spread seed. Uh, even now there's still some seed left on these. So um, you can either cut the seed heads off if you don't want to encourage that behavior or keep them. Add more seed to the bed if you do. So that's something you can also do on these slightly warmer winter days. Um, but yeah, re really it just depends on what your goals are. And for us, just try and find a balance um, we're trying to find a balance here at the Discovery Center and since there's only a few of us who work in the landscape together, nine acres is quite a bit to cover. So we, um, we do what we can and try not to get too antsy during these warmer days because it is still February. <laughs> it's still winter time, um, but a few things you can do in the garden. So let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, I wanted to show you all um, the fragrant sumac because oh, yeah. that one's really cute. Okay, we've got this little friend here. There's a few of them. Yeah, so this is actually a shrub, okay. um, fragrant sumac, and yeah, very noticeable with oops, with these little structures here on the end. Um, Madison, I think you said what did what did you yeah, say? Yeah, they, they look, look like? like little pine cones at the end. Don't they? They're little, little, little scaly buds. friends. They are little buds. And so these, um, I think these are gorgeous year round, even though it's a small detail. I mean, it's still gorgeous. Yeah. It has really interesting color, shape, texture. Um, and later in the year, it will produce um, seeds. And actually here's some old ones. Ooh. So in the, um, I think about May, they'll get fuzzy red fruit, just like smooth sumac. They're also known as droops. Um, so they're like, um, they're different than berries. I can't remember the definition, but I'll have it by the time <laughs> this show goes live. Um, but the, uh, the red fruits are fuzzy and um, have like a citric acid coating on it. So you may have heard me talk about uh, sumac aid 
Have, I, have you had any sumac lemonade yet? I haven't had it, but I've definitely heard you guys okay. talking about it. So we'll have some later this year. It's so much fun. Um, but these plants produce similar fruits and you can do something similar, though they're not as productive fruit wise, but the birds love them. They make, um, they've got cultivars of this species, but I love the true native because I think they're just, they have a beautiful shape. They do get to be, they can get pretty tall. Well, I say pretty tall compared mm -hmm. to me. Um, we have one over there that's just a little bit taller than me. It's probably about six feet tall, um, but they don't get much taller than that. So uh, easy to maintain. Um, we've got it growing in here. And um, yeah, so we'll, we'll leave these here. They'll fill out with beautiful leaves. The leaves are really interesting in their shape too. Um, so kind of a, a nice little edge, um, shrub edge on this garden. But now you can see kind of how we've removed most of those big floppers um, and we've made room uh, for more of a spotlight of that Monarda, that bee balm. Um, I do want to show one more thing. So just like with the asters I showed you, sometimes when you're cutting back your plant material for the year, you may run into some snags here like I did. I was using my electric um, hedge trimmer earlier, but now I switched back to my, my pruners and I'm just doing a very similar method. Just grabbing and trimming back. Oh, and look what's under here. Oh my gosh, some poppy mollus hiding. You know, this is actually Columbine, but oh, it, really? looks, it looks the so much. They do look really similar. They do, and I love that. Um, because see how they, they, they're all, they're both kind of clustered together. Mm -hmm. Um, but this one I know is Columbine because it actually has a stem that it comes off of. And here's the base here. So, wow. Um, Columbine's very cool, very tolerant of both sun and shade and um, attractive to uh, hummingbirds and all kinds of other friends. Oh my God. And I found an Uuthika. Oh, what is that? Well, this is a praying mantis egg sac oh, <laughs> instead of, oh, squirrel, oh, insect. So unfortunately, this is the non-native, um, the the Asian mantis, which mm -hmm. uh, people brought over here to use as pest control in the gardens. Uh, please do not buy these at garden centers. We don't need any more invasive species coming in to the landscape here. And uh, th this particular type of mantis is known for eating hummingbirds oh. and monarch caterpillars. So I'll, <laughs> it is awful. I'll include some info on that in the notes, but. Um, yeah, this one's probably already hatched, but you'll mm. see them. Uh, we have a native mantis called the Carolina mantis, but their Uuthika, which is what this is, the egg sac, um, is actually a little flatter. Mm. So um, yeah, these are pretty prolific, but I'll go ahead and dispose of it. Okay, so that's about all the time we have for today. Um, thank you for joining us for Native Plants at Noon, warmer winter days at the Discovery Center. And if you have questions, go ahead and email us to hello at deeproots.org. We'd love to answer your gardening questions and have you come join us in the garden later this year. Thanks so much. See you next time. Wow, that was fantastic. Makes me want to get out in my garden and, and get busy already, even though it is still February. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, please, again, you can go to deeproots.org for more information or resources. And of course, if you have any questions besides what you've already put into the question section, please do send those to hello at deeproots.org. And Sydney will get back to you next week after the Planet Native Conference happens. Um, beyond that, please do consider going to the uh, Native Plant Design Workshop on the 2nd of March and might be able to get more of your questions answered then as well. It sounds like a really fantastic presentation. Uh, other than that, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your day and we'll see you at the na next Native Plants at noon. Thanks so much.